Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Uh, today's video is on installing a set of nav lights on a boat. Uh, there's a fair bit of theory in this video. Um, mostly theory I think is pretty important. I see a lot of navigation lights installed on boats. Uh, they work in the sense they come on, um, but they're not actually sort of uh, pointing in the right directions and doing the things they're supposed to do. Uh, so the first thing I do is go through how navigation lights are supposed to be angled on a boat. I think it's pretty important to understand that uh, in order to um, go about mounting them in correct places, essentially. Uh, if you're sort of familiar with that or it's not really your thing, um, feel free to skip towards about the six minute mark where we start the actual physical install. Otherwise, hang around and we'll go through on the chalkboard. Before we begin, I'll just go through um, a bit of a theory about what these lights are trying to achieve, what navigation lights are for and how they work. Um, these rules that sort of govern how uh, lights should look on a boat come from the international uh, collision regulations, uh, sort of coal regs from short. Um, so I think the full title is something like uh, um, International Regulations for the Prevention of Collision at Sea or something like that. Um, and But it is really good to understand them, uh, at least the lines that relate to small boats, before you start installing your boats. Because until you really know what you're trying to achieve, it's hard to know whether you're installing them properly. You might have them wired up correctly, which we'll go through later, uh, doesn't mean they're actually um, achieving their intended purpose. So the way lights should be um, on a small boat, and by small we're talking under 12 metres, the collision regulations stipulate below 12 metres and under 12 metres. Uh, there's supposed to be a white masthead light that shines um, 225 degrees um, around, a stern light that shines 135 degrees around, um, and they add up to 360, so wherever you are around the boat, you'll see a white light. Um, and then also, when you get to the exact same angle, you start seeing the masthead light, you'll start seeing the starboard green light for uh, 112.5 degrees, and eventually it cuts to the red port light for 112.5 degrees, and eventually come back. So from the back of the boat, um, you'll only see this white light. Uh, from the right side, you'll see the masthead and the starboard light. From ahead, you'll see uh, masthead, starboard, and port. And from the port side, you'll only see port and the masthead light. So this angle here, so if you actually take a sort of 90 degree line through the center of the boat, they describe this as being two points. So it's uh, 22.5 degrees. So from the beam of the boat, you have these shining back. So you'll often hear it described as two points above the beam. So a point is 11 and a quarter degrees. It's a bit of an antiquated term, but I'll sort of show you a bit about that later. Um, and so two points, as in above, or even further to the stern, from the beam of the boat, from perpendicular, your masthead and your side lights will shine. So the main idea here is that you should be able to tell where you are relative to a boat. Um, when you're overtaking a boat, um, you, you just, you're considered to be the overtaking vessel when you are approaching from an angle somewhere in here. So if you can't see, if you're in this zone, you won't see any of these side lights. And if you can't see the side lights, then you're considered to be the overtaking vessel and rules change. So there's actually quite a lot to the way these lights are set up. They're not just straightforward left side, right side lights. Don't get me wrong, I understand that in small boats, most people don't really care about the finer points. Um, and I don't either, to be honest with you. But this is what it actually is about. So I'm sort of telling you how it should be by the book. Um, I believe a bit of uh, pragmatic, you know, sort of uh, considerations should come in, particularly with small boats. These regulations were definitely designed with relatively large boats, uh, ocean-going boats and things in mind. But I hope that sort of explains the angles they're supposed to be. I'll just quickly show you about the points of a compass. Um, just so you get a sense of what they're talking about when they say these two points above the beam is the angle at which you should start seeing side lights and a master. So we're probably all pretty familiar with a compass like north, south, east, west, whatever. Um, and then commonly you'll see northeast um, as the 45 and then east, northeast and north, northeast is the 22 and a half degrees. And so a point of the compass is actually when they're further all divided in half. So that's 11 and a quarter degrees, which is kind of the finest um, graduation you'll get um, before you start, um, start getting into just degrees. 
So here, if we say 1.2 points, we get to 22 and a half degrees, and that's the 22 and a half degrees past perpendicular to the center line of the boat. So when we talk about these two points above, we're talking about one, two points of these sort of graduations on a compass. So if by some miracle all that theory hasn't made you click off and go to some other video, um, we'll start getting into actually physically install them on the small boat. I did just think it was important to see that because unless you're knowing what you're trying to achieve, how do you kind of achieve it? So uh, let's get in now. We'll start installing a set of lights. So it's a beautiful Sydney summer's day. I'm glad we're inside. Right. One thing I see from time to time is uh, navigation lights just screwed down to the deck like this. So as you can probably guess from the, the sort of, you know, just having gone through the, the arcs these lights are supposed to shine, uh, they're not designed to shine up into the sky. They're designed to shine horizontally to show other boats those angles we just saw. So in order to mount that on this boat, um, what I'm going to do is just make up some little aluminium brackets. I'll probably put them back here somewhere, uh, actually possibly up front. Obviously it's important they're not obscured in their arc, so you've got to look at what sort of uh, staunchions. This is unfortunately made out of steel instead of aluminium, bad choice. Um, anyway, that's an aside. Um, so we're looking at somewhere we can mount them so they're parallel to the, um, to the centre line of the boat. We're not looking at making them parallel to the to the gunnels or anything because that'll once again throw those arcs out. We're looking at making them parallel to the center line and having them so they're unobscured in the full arc that each light's supposed to show. So to do that, I'm gonna make up some brackets so that I can rivet to the deck and then screw the lights onto those. Now here's a piece of aluminium. Uh, what are we saying? Maybe one to one and a half mil thick um, that I just got from a scrapyard down the road for $20, so that was pretty cheap. Uh, and then I'm just going to cut out these brackets. So I'll probably cut them to be pretty flush to the size of the light and then probably, I don't know, maybe 40 mil or something to stand up on. So I'll cut those out and then once they're cut I'll show you how I fold them. Now they're cut, I'm just going to deburr the edges on a Y wheel. I'm going to fold these plates along that uh, crease line so they can have a, a flat surface to do on the deck and they can sit up where the uh, lights go. Uh, using a set of these, uh, all it is is a kind of an edge like that and a V. So you just simply lay the plate along and press these together. These are designed, they've got magnets here and a lip. They're actually designed to go in a normal bench vise. But my bench vise uh, that I'm using at the moment, oops, that way around, sorry, um, is just a bit too narrow, narrow for them to, to sit sort of stably on each other. So I'm going to use a press instead. But really, these are designed for a vise. So if you've just got a bench vise, that's all you need. You don't actually need a press to do this. So you can see here, um, it's a little bit tricky to line up, actually, much easier actually if you're using a vise. Um, but we'll give it a go. So the more I just crank it down, the more this blade comes in until we got a 90 degree angle. Sorry, I'm probably wobbling that as I... So I think we'll stop there and take a look what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So we'll just do the same thing. This is the way we're going to sit it on deck. Do the same thing to the other one, and then we're ready to uh, start drilling this. To drill this, I start by just centering it on this, uh, sort of this way, fore and aft on the bracket, and then just tilt it straight up. Then I just mark where these wires fall, so wherever the wires fall I'll mark, and then sort of in this direction, and then I'll just measure it so the hole sort of at the centre 
then once it's there I can put the light on with the wires coming through, it sits a bit more flush and then just use a punch or a pen or something to mark where the screw holes go. I've drilled all the holes now um, so these outside ones I end up drilling to 6mm for the bolts that came through uh, where the wires come through I've drilled it as 8 and it was 5mm for these um, these bottom rivets. The stage we're at now is we've got uh, both lights screwed onto their mounts, the wires for them, these are just the wires that came with this particular LED light so we'll extend those below deck. Uh, they've got two rivet holes drilled in each one um, and this is a wire connected directly to the holder for that globe so this already has its longer wire. Because of this antenna I'm thinking I'm just going to mount these around about here. Um, you get your angle back a couple of points uh, back this way and you get a view straight forward this way as well. So I'm going to mount them around about here just far enough from this little um, saddle just so that uh, you know if a carabine or a rope gets put on there it's not in the way. So I'll mark a point that I'm going to drill for the wire to come through, that's the 8mm hole. Uh, relative to these two staunchions. So I'll do those on each side and once the bracket's laying flat because the um, wire's through, I'll work on getting them uh, parallel to the center line of the boat. So the best way to do this um, is if you've got any sort of line that you know is perpendicular, Then you can just run a 90 degrees off that perpendicular line and come across. So I'll do that and once we've got the, the bracket parallel to the boat, I'll just mark those two and drill those ready to rivet them down. I've also just quickly off camera um, soldered an extension wire to this uh, port side LED light so it's ready to go now to reach the switch. So I'll feed this through and then we'll uh, rivet it onto the holes we've drilled onto the deck. So obviously the other thing about the rivets you choose is the head needs to be long enough to go through the bracket and through the hull with enough um, to make sure it sort of accommodates any slight air gap it might have before you um, before you close the rivet up. So I'll put both rivets up in just to make sure it's aligned properly. Eventually the rivet will just snap and all you're left with is this, this shank which you can sort of bend and you'll end up with a relatively nice flush surface. So I'll do the other side and then we're ready to duck under the deck and start wiring them up. At the risk of making this video a little bit too um, theoretical, I'll just go through on the chalkboard quickly what this circuit looks like. Uh, essentially it's just got the battery in the back and from there um, some twin core wire takes power up to the front of the boat. So this just comes around and essentially to the back of the switchboard. Now this negative is this um, pin we've got where we're aggregating all these um, all these uh, cables for lights. So when we have our uh, our two lights up the front, we've got a uh, port light up here, a starboard light up here, and a stern light here. Now coming from under the deck we've got the two sets of uh, positive and negative leads from the two lights that are mounted up here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just strip a bit of the insulation and group the two negatives together and the two positives together. The two negatives are going to go to here which is where all the negatives for every other device in this boat meet. They're just joined by a bolt which you know is a reasonably cost effective way to do it. Um, the positive will then go to one of these switches. These are all the the switches on the boat. This lead here is the positive coming from the battery. That positive lead goes onto here and provides positive power through all these little fuse holders, then onto a switch and then out. So by connecting the positive for the switches to one of these outs here, it'll receive power in here and out here whenever this switch is on and this fuse isn't blown. So that's where our positive comes and our negative is just a permanent at this kind of aggregation here.
And for no other reason other than to uh, match up what they're terminating with, I've got a, a ring connector on the ground to go over there and a spade connector, a female spade connector on the positives to go on the back of the, the switches there. So I'll wire these up and we'll give them a test. I've now got all those uh, uh, grounds put back together, all the sort of black negative wires. And here we now have to have this, um, could use a bit of tape, it's actually got a bare, bit of bare wire here because it didn't all fit in. Um, something to be aware of, when you're wiring things, the hull of the boat is, is pretty much ground. The battery um, connects to the motor, to the metal of the motor, the metal of the motor is attached to the metal hull. Um, you know, and so wherever you have something like this, if it can touch any part of the metal boat, it'll short. So I'll, I'll put some tape on that or some heat shrink on that before we finish. But just quickly, uh, so this is the positive into the switch board. This is gonna go onto one of the switches, but I can bypass that by simply supplying power to here. And you'll see those lights coming on. It's our port light, our starboard light on. So we know all our wiring's good. Um, I'll just clean this up so that can't short on anything and then we'll hook it up to one of these switches. If it doesn't work when it's hooked up to one of these switches, either the fuse is blown in here or the switch is bad and these switches are replaceable. You can just wind these nuts off and pull the switch out for the back and put a new one in. Oh, one last thing worth mentioning. When you go to install a panel like this and you're sort of not doing your testing, just disconnect the negative battery lead um, or pull the fuse out from the main lead, whatever. Um, because your chances of shorting out against the casing with any one of these positive wires is pretty much 100%, you know, very high anyway. So just make sure you switch the power off before you start screwing these kinds of things in and then switch it back on again by reconnecting the negative battery terminal in order to do your testing. This boat's opted to go for an all-round white light, as we talked at the beginning, so boats under 12 metres can have an all-round white light instead of a masthead and a stern light. Uh, it's a socketed design, so you can drop the light in and out, which I think is okay for occasional use, but once again, this is a, a commuter boat with um, daily use that lives on the water, and I find these sockets to be pretty unreliable. Uh, I can even see here, so this, um, if you probably could have told as this video goes on, is a boat that used to have working lights and hasn't for a while. Um, these, I'm presuming, purely because they're in this area and they don't go anywhere else, um, a wires that used to be connected to this socket. So what I'm going to do is just uh, run these through the socket and then permanently wire them to the terminals here. I'm actually even... No, oh, maybe that has snapped off. Yeah, it's just the pin snapped off. I'm going to hardwire these. Um, it's either that or buy a new socket and to be honest with you, even the new socket won't last, last that long. So I'll wire this one in um, what I like to do is just have enough slack on it, so if you need to, you can actually still pull it out of the socket and sort of lay it flat, even though it's still permanently soldered to the wires. I think that sort of gives you the best of both worlds. So once we've done that, I'll um, trace these up to the front and get these hooked up to a switch as well. We could have them all on the same switch, um, but it is good to be able to turn your side lights off independently because once your side lights are on, this can act as an anchor light. So if you're fishing, you just have your all-round white light, it's an anchor light. If you're underway, you turn your side lights on as well. So those two wires run up to here. Um, the negative goes to this bolt that aggregated all those grounds. Uh, the positive actually comes to this top light that's actually labeled anchor light, which is good. So we've got running lights and anchor lights. So when our running lights are on, we get our red and green side lights. And then if I also switch the anchor light on, we get the all-round. So we want both these on when you're underway which means that from ahead you'll see a two side lights and you'll see the white and then from behind you'll just see the white light which is what a power boat under 12 meters shows when it's underway. Uh, so if you stop for a fish you just turn the side lights off and leave the anchor light on um, and then obviously when you're back home just switch them both off. Before we finish up there's, um, there's just one thing I want to show you which is what I've actually got on my boat. Um, which is slightly unusual, not strictly legal. Um, yeah, I know, like I've been trying to tell you in this video exactly how the coal rigs work and what is 100% correct. Uh, but what we do here uh, that is legal is we can have a stern light and not a masthead light. So essentially, 
instead of having an all round or a stern and a masthead, you're allowed to just have a stern line. Um, and that's really because of the nature of a lot of small boats around here. And it is quite hard to have a light uh, at the front of a boat, um, particularly at the front of a tinny. Um, and having an all round white light quite tall is hard when the boat lives in the water. They get broken off all the time and knock against walls. It's quite tricky to have that. And so there is a local regulation that gives uh, boats an exemption if they're below five meters and they're within a certain part of the river. So that's very specific to the local area, so I won't bore you with that much more. Um, so what I actually have is a stern light uh, mounted on the outboard. And I'll show you this. So this one, I've just made up a metal bracket. Uh, there's bolts through and some large washers, so it catches on quite a big surface area of the fiberglass of the, of the cowling. Uh, and then just enough slack in the line so that as the outboard tilts and moves, um, it's, um, you know, it doesn't go taut at all. What I like about the system is when the outboard's tilted up, uh, this light's pretty much inside the boat. Um, if you have one sort of mounted on the transom here, um, and the boat's up against other boats, as they often are here, the bow of a boat can kind of swing across and knock them off. They get knocked off really, uh, not stolen, just <laughs> physically knocked off by, by the bows of other boats really readily. Uh, so here it's actually quite protected. It's a very sheltered area here. What makes it not 100% legal is that as you turn left and right, you are changing the arc this shows slightly. Personally, I think, you know, you can see the boat from behind. It's a nice, bright two mile light that shines a good arc. Uh, it's gonna stop someone coming up behind you on a dark, foggy night or whatever and not seeing you. So I'm comfortable with it from a functionality point of view, but because the angle isn't um, set to the boat, it's not strictly following those arcs we talked about right at the beginning. Um, having one like that down low here, obviously means that if a boat comes from the other side, that light's gonna be obscured behind the outboard. But here, this is the highest part of the back of the boat. So you can always see this when you're underway. Just thought I'd show you that. As I said, it's not strictly by the book, but I found that to be really, really practical for this area. Um, very secure. I've never had one of these get damaged in any way whatsoever. And you can always see it from the back of the boat. So I'm pretty happy with that setup. Something you might want to think about if it suits the area you live in. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope this made sense. I guess this is kind of two halves of this video. One is understanding the uh, international collision regulations and how they specify navigation lights and how they work. Um, understanding what these lights mean and what they look like from different angles and what they mean when you see them from different angles. Um, it's kind of important, I guess, to understand how to go on and install them. And the other half, obviously, is the wiring. You know, Once you've decided how you're gonna mount them, where you're gonna mount them, what lights you've chosen to use in your boat, um, then, um, then obviously going on and actually how you physically do that with various brackets, the wiring centuries, you know, the second piece of the puzzle. So I'm, I like to think this video sort of covers both halves of that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time. See ya.